In this video, we're going to take a look at the open HTTP redirect lab from the damn vulnerable web application. So we've been provided with a couple of links, one of which is a cheat sheet, but I'm going to go over to the Sneak website, which has a short description on what open redirects are. So an open redirect vulnerability occurs when an application allows a user to control a redirect or forward to another URL. If the app doesn't validate the untrusted user input, an attacker could supply a URL that redirects an unsuspecting victim from a legitimate domain to an attacker's phishing website. Attackers exploit open redirects to add credibility to their phishing attacks. Most users see the legitimate trusted domain but don't notice the redirection to the phishing site. Although this vulnerability doesn't always directly impact the legitimate application, the company's reputation can be negatively impacted. In addition, open redirects may not seem like a high impact to the organization itself, but it's important to avoid damaging trust that users have in the business. It's worth noting an open redirect to your own site may be very well used against your own employees. All right, so that was a nice short intro into open redirects. There's also an OWASP definition here, which says, unvalidated redirects and forwards are possible when a web application accepts untrusted input that could cause the app to redirect the request to a URL contained within untrusted input. By modifying untrusted URL input to a malicious site, an attacker may successfully launch a phishing scam and steal user credentials. As suggested above, a common use for this is to create a URL which initially goes to a real site but then redirects the victim to a site controlled by the attacker. This site could be a clone of the target's login page to steal credentials, a request for credit card details to pay for a service on the target site, or simply a spam page full of advertising. All right, so quite similar to what we saw on the sneak page, that's the definition. Our objective is to abuse the redirect page to move the user off the DVWA site or onto a different page on the site than expected. And the low level says that there's no limitations, we can redirect to anywhere we want. So we've got the low difficulty set at the moment. Let's take a look at this first quote. All right, doesn't seem particularly interesting. We've got this ID up here. Maybe we could try and put a URL in here and see what happens. Let's try and put in like google.co.uk, but we just get this message back saying missing quote ID. So let's take a look at Burp Suite and see what the request was like when it was sent. That's the one that we just modified, but when we initially viewed the quote, this was the page that was visited, open redirect source, load.php, and then our query, we have this redirect key, and then the value is info.php. So let's send that to the repeater, and then see if we can modify this and change it to Google. So we'll do http google.co.uk, send, and we've got this 302 found, which means there is a redirection, so it's actually gonna change the location now to google.co.uk. Another thing to consider, as was mentioned in the example, is that this could be a very similar site. So we're currently on DBWA. Let's say it's dbwa.co.uk. Well, you could have something here which is like D V W A. Wait, I got that wrong. All right, it's not going to work. I was going to do two V's instead of a W, but because there's a W after the V, it's just not going to work. But let's just say, all right, another example. Let's say that we had. A funny looking character so maybe we've got one of the A's with like an accent over it or something then a victim might visit the URL they'll go through to the real DVWA page but then they'll be redirected to this fake one which looks the same so then they just start using it as normal they don't notice that the URL is different because it's just one character which is off and it looks very similar to what it should be let's also try this in the browser as well so let me take a copy of this in fact, let me take a copy of that. I'm going to paste that here and I'm going to grab this. And you might have seen that Google released some new TLDs, some top level domains recently, one of which is .zip, which people aren't too happy about. So it means that websites like download.zip might be possible. And this is going to go through to our DVWA and then it should just redirect straight through to download.zip, which as you can see, it does. So this could be an exploit kit or something. If you're running like an old computer system, an old browser, old operating system, and somebody sends you a link, it looks like it's going to DVWA or to Google or whatever. But whenever you actually access the link, it redirects to an exploit kit. And that exploit kit does some fingerprinting on your browser and OS and tries to find out, are you using any outdated software for which they've got an exploit for? If so, they'll deliver the exploit and then take over the computer system, deliver some ransomware or something from there. So it could have some bad impl implications. It's worth saying that exploit kits aren't very active anymore and browsers have a lot more protections against them. So 
this is less of a concern. I would say that the phishing instance is more of a concern. So if you have a link which you think is to go and log into your Google account, but then it redirects to a fake website that looks like Google and you log in, obviously you have lost your credentials then. And you might think, well, I'll just look at the URL and if it has anything here that looks dodgy, then I won't click on it. But another thing to consider is there could be some URL encoding. So what if this was all URL encoded? What if it was just like, let's do, oh, I did control and U there, but it doesn't URL encode all of the characters. Let's do, where is it? URL encode, no, convert selection, URL, and we want to encode all characters. And you can also do Unicode here as well. So you can code that, and this isn't really clear this is going to be going to another website. So you might just see that in the browser and just think this is just some kind of like tracking thing, or it's just like a search query, but actually it's going to redirect you to whatever site is URL encoded. All right, so let's take a look at the next difficulty level. I'm going to open this up in a new tab because I don't want it to reset my zoom. I'm going to change the security to medium, submit, and then we'll refresh this page as well. And let's have a look at the help. So this one says, the code prevents you from using absolute URLs to take the user off the site. So you can either use relative URLs to take them to other pages on the same site or a protocol relative URL. I forgot to actually look at the source code for the first one. So what we'll do is we'll just wait until the end and then we'll compare the source code for each level and find out what's happened. But let's take a look at this level. So if we try and do the same thing again, let me just, I can just change this to medium in the repeater. So we'll do medium, we'll click send and it also redirected. Okay, that's interesting. Is that because I have the URL encoding? Let me take that out. I'm gonna put that back to google.co.uk and let's try and change that to medium. Send, 302 found, follow redirection. Okay, so it did redirect. I'm not sure why that's the case actually. All right, let's try and do it in the browser, maybe it's not updating the cookie. Maybe the session ID also changed whenever we changed that. Let's have a look. We'll paste this in and it still redirected us. Let me che check the difficulty. All right, it's still on, it is on medium. Let me try and redo the quote thing. So I'll do back and then I'll click that again. And now I have to zoom in again and let's have a look at it in Burp Suite. So it went through, it's gone to, okay, so it needs to go to medium.php first. All right, so we'll send that to the repeater. We'll try and do what we did previously where we just had like Google in here. Click send and it says absolute URLs are not allowed. So we can just change it so it's not an absolute URL and we can do that by taking out this HTTP. Click send, we get this 302 found, so it's gonna redirect us to google.co.uk. And there we go, we can follow the redirection. So another nice easy one. Let's go ahead and change the difficulty again. So I'll set this to high, submit, let's refresh this page. And okay, I need to click back anyway, so I'm gonna to have to do the zoom again. Let's take a look at quote two this time. All right, and we'll go back to our Burp suite, we'll have a look at the request. So again, this time it's going to hi.php. We'll send the repeater and we should probably actually find out what this level is about. So it says the redirect page tries to lock you to only redirect to info.php, but it does this by checking that the URL contains info.php. All right, so there should be a couple of different ways that we can try and solve this. Let us have a look. First of all, if we update this to Google, let's see what happens. We click send and we can only redirect to the info page. Okay, but it's only looking for info.php in the URL it said there. So we might be able to use, well, we could put in another query here. Let's say and test equals, and then we'll just say info.php. Send, that didn't work, okay. There we go, all right. I just had to URL encode that by the looks of it and now it redirects to Google. We can verify that by just putting that into the browser as well. If we put it into the browser, we don't need to URL encode this because it'll do that for us. So there we go, let's try that. Oh, it says we can only redirect to the info page. Okay, depending on how it's implemented, another way to solve this might be to use the hash symbol here. So whatever is after the hash symbol won't actually be sent to the web server. This is just used to like redirect it to different parts of the page. But depending on how the validation is set up, it might have worked in this case, although it didn't. So 
that's not viable here. We'll have a look at the source code shortly and find out why that is. Another thing is you could redirect, say this is our attacker website, you could redirect to info.php on the attacker website and that would be a way to bypass it. Obviously info.php doesn't exist so it might interfere with the attack plan a little bit but there's a couple of ways to solve it anyway. Okay so let's go back to the lab and we have now done the three levels so now we're on to impossible which we shouldn't be able to solve. Let's go and have a look what it says and let's take a look at the source code as well. So looking at the help, it says, rather than accepting a page or a URL as the redirect target, the system uses ID values to tell the redirect page where to redirect to. This ties the system down to only redirect pages it knows about, and so there's no way for the attacker to modify things to go to a page of their choosing. All right, cool. So let's take a look at the source code. View source, and let me zoom in here a bit. In fact, let me maximize this. We want to compare all levels and let's start off with the low one. So very simple, it's just checking for a query parameter of redirect and then if it exists and it's not empty, it's going to redirect to that location. So it's using the location header to redirect to that, which will be that 302 that we saw previously. And then the medium, it is this time just checking to make sure, so it's still doing the same thing, it's checking to see if you've got a redirect query in the URL and that it's not empty and if it isn't it's then going to make sure that it doesn't have HTTP or HTTPS at the beginning. If it does it'll block it but if it doesn't it'll still redirect using that location header and obviously we don't need that at the beginning we can use that relative redirect. And then the high difficulty this changed it so it was looking for again the same start so it's just making sure we've got a redirect key and it's not empty and then it's checking whether the value is set to info.php or sorry not if the value is set to info.php, if info.php is in the value, which is why we were able to select that, we were able to provide a redirect value which had info.php in it to bypass this check and then do the redirect. And the reason it didn't work for us using the hash symbol or using the made up parameter is because it's specifically looking for info.php in this redirect parameter. So it's not looking for it anywhere else in the URL, it's looking for it in that parameter, in that value. And then finally, the impossible difficulty is basically a whitelist. So it's basically saying these are the only URLs that you should be able to redirect to. And if it's anything else, then don't redirect. And it's an unknown redirect target. All right, so that's going to wrap it up for the Open HTTP Redirects Lab. I hope you've enjoyed this video. One thing to mention about Open Redirects is if you are doing bug bounty or something like that, quite often these get reported and people expect a bounty. But if you have no impact, then you won't get a bounty. So you need to be able to show, you need to be able to chain it basically and show that you can pair that open redirect with some other kind of vulnerability that will have an impact if attackers exploit it. Apart from that, I would recommend checking out Pwn Function's video on open redirects. He did a really good one. I've left a link to that in the description. And yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this series on DBWA. As I say, I will try to remake some of the older videos because they were done over two years ago and I'm not very happy with the quality. And then maybe we'll get some more labs soon that I'll be able to add onto the series as well. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Any questions or comments, as ever, leave them down below. Thanks.